Hello, welcome to the New Stack Makers, a podcast where we talk about at scale application development, deployment, and management. Thanks to the Cloud Foundry Foundation for sponsoring our podcasts and live streams from the Cloud Foundry Summit in Basel, Switzerland. Learn more about the Cloud Foundry runtime and application runtime at cloudfoundry.org. Hey, it's Alex Williams, the new stack here at the Cloud Foundry Summit in Basel, Switzerland with Kim Barron of Google. Kim, how are you? I'm good, Alex. How are you? I think we first met when you were at CenturyLink. Yes, two and, companies ago. Yeah, two companies ago. And now, tell us about your role at, at, uh, at Google. I joined back in May um, to kind of solve um, a little bit of a connection problem that we were having. Um, a lot of our developer advocates and developer program engineers um, are super talented in their SMEs in their various areas. And our um, sales engineers and, and sales pods really um, are talking to some amazing customers and they want to know um, how they can utilize uh, those folks for their subject matter expertise and their knowledge. And so um, I've spent the first however many months this has been so far getting to know a lot of people on various teams and um, kind of helping build programs and teams around supporting our bigger customers. So what are those programs that you're working on, you're building? Um, so we come in and we um, we talk about talk with the customer and it's it's really in a phase where um, it's developer to developer engineer to engineer um, and they're trying to solve various business problems and they're trying out different tools um, they're evolving their culture and so our um, our DAs like Kelsey and some of the right. other ones come in and um, they do kind of a workshop format and it's very interactive and it's it's less slides and more. Um, you know, I always laugh and say we have two ears and one mouth for a reason. So we come in and we listen to kind of their problems and things like that. And we kind of go through a lot of the things together. And it's been super helpful for them uh, to iterate faster. And you're doing this, you know, as you said, to, you know, help get the Google developers actually into the customers, you know, get them out and seeing the customers and having them talk to the customers, mm -hmm. correct? Right. And, and kind of a cool thing that's happened um, with these types of workshops um, is our customers are, are becoming our advocates um, for the various products and open source tooling inside of GCP. So um, I love seeing that personally because that's how you know that, you know, it's working. We just Now we're on scale, we're trying to scale it. What are customers saying? What are what are the, what are you hearing from customers uh, when your developers are going out and talking to them? Um, our customers are really interested in learning more about machine learning, especially. Really. Uh, TensorFlow is a huge um, topic for us lately. Huh. Um, and then containers and Kubernetes and GKE. Those are our other our other big topics of the bigger customers. How are they? Uh, what are they asking about machine learning? What are some of the particular problems they're trying to solve? The you know the you know what are, what are they trying to train I guess so right. to speak yeah we're talking to a customer where um, they want voice recognition built into an application and it's a customer facing you know public facing type of a project that they're building I can't really talk a ton about it but right. um, so that's very interesting um, and you know they're coming to us and and they're going through training once we've done a workshop and they're doing you know POCs and they go through the training and everything and I just see light bulbs turn on you know and and I feel like they're they're upping their value they're they're really switching from a fixed mindset inside of a customer like you know these are hundred year old companies right some of them um, to a growth mindset so and it's to me, you know, it's all about the people. So it's it's very um, makes me makes me feel like we're doing the right things. So. So what what brings you here then? What brings you to the Cloud Foundry Summit? This is my community. Um, so I've been part of the community before we had a foundation and um, have run user groups and try to you know source speakers back when we could barely find speakers. And now it's an awesome thing to have. We have tons of speakers and not enough slots. Um, not always the case, um, but I'm here because um, I've I've been coming since 2015, I guess, and it's 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 really a community that um, I've seen grow um, over time. So supporting what, Google here. What's the importance for Cloud Foundry in the Google community now? Yeah, um, Cloud Foundry is something that a lot of our larger customers uh, feel like is a tool that they can use to build applications um, faster. Um, and it's it's a tool that helps them um, 
change culture and ultimately ends up in a more of a DevOps culture. Um, and, and some of them are even moving to SRE and CRE type uh, principles because of these new applications, you know. So, how are you seeing that? Um, 12 factor apps. Um, the way that SRE works, and not every product inside of Google uses SRE. Um, the way that works is you have to have very little toil and uh, high uptime. Um, and if you're building features um, and you've got downtime, you basically have an, an error budget. And you, once you get there, you're not allowed to build in anything new until like you get you kind of fix what you have that's going on. That's like a high level, I should say. But um, so we're seeing customers really start to understand that, and so. So often, even now, we've got systems folks on one side of the, the fence and, you know, developers on another side of the fence, and it was always, you know, their problem, and yeah. they were really involved. And we've really, you know, I think we're, we spend so much time arguing about what level of abstraction our customers should focus on, when really there's so many customers we talk to every day that are just trying to get to cloud still. Yeah. So, and that's why I think Cloud Foundry is a good, a good place for that. Yeah, that, that came up with the, the, dis the discussions this morning about just getting to the cloud, and actually, I've had discussions with a lot of other people about this and you know so I guess the question for me is you know how do you, how are you in your old job trying to like help that developer experience how are you trying to like enhance a develop what is Google trying to do to enhance a developer experience right we have um over 50 people that are developer advocates, DPEs on our cloud DevRel team alone. And they're the, those are the ones you're working with to yeah. get out there. Yeah, and they are SMEs in all types of areas. I mean, you name it. We've got Go and Python and Node and, um, you know, in more enterprise level folks that are, they've been focused a lot on storage and infrastructure and operations, um, not just Kubernetes. We have a lot of Kubernetes, obviously, folks that understand that too, but, and we're growing like crazy. And so that's knowledge that, you know, these devs and engineers and systems folks, they, they need to hear kind of like the day to day. So. How, how do you then delineate, you know, between like Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry, you know, because they they're, they are becoming increasingly bound to some degree, but mm -hmm. loosely coupled in many respects, right? But how, how do you how do you how do you personally make that connection? Yeah, we I, I have a customer, um, Kelsey and I actually visited them back in June, and they just had. Um, we were talking about Kubernetes and they also brought up Cloud Foundry in the same meeting and said, hey, we've been trying it for about four weeks now, so far so good, uh, we're, we're getting there, we're kind of getting the hang of it. Um, and so, same team, uh, trying out two different tools, right, um, two different projects. So it just depends on, I think, the people you have on your team and like what, you know, what they're comfortable with using and then what they're trying to do. So, mm -hmm. um, just like I'm probably Sarah, you know, and a lot of people are going to say this week, you know, it's, it's, we all, you know, complementary communities and different use cases and it's, it's just a customer choice is what it is so right 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 so when you're talking to developers when you're, you're developer advocates internally and you're discussing topics that you know I see as important to Google and other companies uh, you know this idea that uh, the cloud really can be anywhere right you know uh, it doesn't matter if you have a data center of your own or if you're using a public cloud service or in third-party services the cloud is what you, you know, the cloud is everywhere, but in many respects, it's still about connecting those pieces mm -hmm. together. Right. How do you guys work with each other to help tell that story effectively? Because it, it does come down to like, how does the cloud service abstract, right? And how, how do you, and so you must have these conversations about different layers of abstraction yeah, and yeah. such. Yeah. It gets down to the teams, right? I mean, different teams need different things. Um, and when you're talking about really um, high performance, applications that really do need to be housed, you know, in different places um, and not just fill over or whatever. Um, that's why I think I think Google has the best team to kind of help them do that. And that's not necessarily our developer advocate team. Those are more like solutions architect teams. Yeah. Miles Ward and those folks and they, they, they're the ones that architect the solutions that really are. I'm astounded by what all of our team does every day. I have to say it's it's pretty powerful and they're doing things that I, I don't think any of us have seen. Mm -hmm. so. hmm. Interesting. So what is your, you know, what, what, what is your ongoing focus going to be, you know, 
Is it going to be working with the Cloud Foundry community on, you know, Cloud Foundry on Bosch and the new Cloud Foundry container runtime? You know, is it, uh, or is it more just a much more, it seems like it's a much broader kind of responsibility. Right, than yeah. I definitely have, um, my main focus right now is our um, our customers and helping make sure that we've got, you know, the right folks are going and, and helping them um, from the DevRel community. Um, I do have to have my feet in open source in the communities that I'm in, and I, I will always do that with Cloud Foundry, Kubernetes. Uh, probably those are my main two. The Go community is amazing too. Um, yeah, so wherever our customers are, I mean, I like to hear kind of how they're using our various things in the open source world too. So, so how how is Google changing in your view then? How how is Google changing from an enterprise perspective and from a you know from a cloud native perspective where? Google is so well known for being an advertising platform, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the Google Cloud Group, you know, has, I've been familiar with it for years, um, but it doesn't necessarily have the profile internally as, an, you know, as Android, for example, right? right? So what is, what is the trajectory that you're seeing Google take now that will make the Google Cloud Platform become such a vital part of, you know, the customer story? Yeah, for the larger customers, yeah. uh, especially. Um, I think we have important people that that Diane has hired that she's surrounding herself with inside the company that are making a lot of the right decisions, especially on a partner ecosystems basis. So um, we're a big uh, pivotal Cloud Foundry partner. Yeah. Um, and so that's helped us a lot. There was a roadshow that happened this summer that I think 30 something cities and my, my colleague Casey West was in every single one of them. So and then part of the Kubo team went as well, uh, which is Eric Johnson's graphite team. Um, and they were hearing a lot of great stories. And so I think we keep making investments and partnerships like that and and making it easier for our customers to be able to on ramp on the cloud i think that's the most important thing especially for our larger customers um, you know cloud isn't easy <laughs> for a lot of them so um, if we can make that easier i think that's what we're all trying to be focused on doing right because a lot of it's always been about you know up until i think most recently just talking about gluing things together right? right you know and it seems like there's a change happening where it's not just about it's it's not forcing, you know, the, you know, for the user to, to apply the glue, but almost applying the glue for them so they can connect these different things. Right, agreed. And um, we're seeing more large customers contributing upstream now to open source too. Um, and Google's doing a kind of a unique thing where we make it easy for you to run open source on GCP. I mean, there are teams that that is their sole responsibility, right? I mean, it's under um, Eric Johnson is one of the teams. So they, they work on Ansible and Chef and Puppet and all these other uh, things, HashiCorp, um, all the different tools there, um, and then Cloud Foundry. But, um, we are not, while we may have a product that's more opinionated and, and yes, you pay for that, we're, that's not our mod, that's not necessarily our model across the board. You know, we want you to be able to run these open source tools just as easy on GCP. So that's huge. That's different than the other cloud companies where I've been. So, hmm. yeah, that, that speaks to the, uh, yeah, that need to, you know, to make the developer experience even better. Um, with Cloud Foundry in particular, I think one of the things you know, is noteworthy today is, they were saying that how 40% of the members are end users, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, those end users then are helping drive actually new members into the community. Right. And we're starting to see this um, almost like this supply chain emerge, right? Where like, you know, the, there's these companies that are kind of at the hub and then they're influencing other companies and they kind of become part of that hub and they influence other companies. How are you seeing that evolve? I see that in customers every day. When you get one team that wants to try out a new tool and they get so excited about it and they're starting to have small wins. And if you flip it from failing to learning, then that makes sure it helps you with the growth mindset and it really goes back to that. And they share their knowledge with these teams so fast inside the company that if you're a salesperson right now, I mean, that's that's like a perfect storm, right? Um, and then, like you said, like in the community, those things happen at grassroots level, like at meetups, or if it's a small world like where I'm from in Atlanta, you know, I know that, you know, customers that I used to have are talking to other, you know, folks and, you know, Turner Broadcasting's talking to Weather Channel and, you know, Auto Trader or whatever these similar companies are. And so they share those at meetups or they share those, you know, because, hey, I used to work there and now, you know, I got to tell my buddy about what we're doing over here. It's pretty cool. And so it starts it starts happening organically, right? And so you yeah. really don't need the, no. when it's a good tool and it's a good developer experience, then 
it just spreads. So what's the importance then for Google, you know, um, you know, with the Cloud Foundry Foundation and the CNCF and these other foundations such as, you know, the Node.js, you know, right. foundation. What, what's the importance? So I think that's definitely a question for Sarah. We were just talking yeah. earlier. Um, it's important to, for Google to be a supporter, not just... Maybe I should rephrase it for like from your perspective because yeah. I don't want to put you in that role of like speaking for Sarah. Yeah, I know. But but I mean like for the customers, like when you're out there talking to customers, gotcha. what is the what the, what is the context there? Is there much or but is it more just the fact that you're part of the community and you're 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 supporting it? You know, I think there's conversations that happen at the board level and at the steering committee level and and things like that where we're be, we're able as our, our larger companies are able to bring in that customer feedback um, and help like steer the steering committee. Um, and so just because you're part of CNCF and you're this company and you're a sponsor company, you have a seat on the board, doesn't mean that you're having the same experience and the same customers and they may not, they may be seeing something unrelated in different projects that Google will be, right? And so I think that's where you get the huge value there. And plus there's a, it unifies folks, right? Because I think some vendors come in going, hey, they're our competition. We're really, it, it should just be about the community. We want to make this better for our customers, right? So in some respects, you're out there helping kind of like build the feedback loop, aren't you? Yeah, I think that's hugely important. Um, and that's something we did uh, when Sam joined uh, uh, Google almost a year ago. We are directly tied to product and we are, that's uh, product improvement and customer experience are huge and to, about, to measure that impact. Um, so that's kind of something that in innately we always have in the back of our minds. Yeah. yeah. So so how do you guys treat that? So if you're out talking to customers you are or if Casey's on a thirty city tour, yep. that feedback has to go flow into the product. Right. And then also it has to flow to these open source foundations which are kind of right building out, you know, what you're responsible for taking that feedback and working with the maintainers right. to them, you know, to, to continue the uh, trajectory. Right, exactly. And I think that's how projects like Kubo get started, you know, some someone said, "Hey, you know, what about Kubernetes? Can we do that, you know, with Cloud Foundry?" And um, that was some direct customer feedback, you know, "Hey, I'm already using it." Like can we build this thing? So, um, and I'm not as familiar with um, the the long history of how that happened, but right. you know it, that's the gist of it. So. Right. So thus, it makes it's important to be here because then right. you because because you're all because your work out on the road, your work on yeah. the ground, yeah, kind of like surfaces up to this place really right. here. And, and that's so what like, open yeah. source is. It's like it's yeah. not you know. It's many hands make light work, right? And right. you can scale a lot faster using your community and like agreeing on a common goal than if one company just builds it super opinionated in a vacuum somewhere. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess you can see it in kind of like announcements that you see today then, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that has to be based upon feedback right. that you're receiving in the community because, you know, I mean, I imagine like, you know, going out talking about Kubo, people might say, well, you know, okay, is that like Kubernetes? And you say, well, that's Kubernetes on Bosch. Yeah, yeah. But if you keep your focus on container runtimes and, you know, an application architectures and running it on Bosch, right. that's a story that they've been hearing mm -hmm. and they can relate to that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Kim, thank you so much for taking some time. I feel like I've learned something here, which I love. <laughs> yeah, and thanks for having me. It's always good to see y'all. Great, thanks. Cool. Thanks to the Cloud Foundry Foundation for sponsoring our podcasts and live streams from the Cloud Foundry Summit in Basel, Switzerland. Learn more about the Cloud Foundry runtime and application runtime at cloudfoundry.org. Listen to more episodes of the New Stack Makers at thenewstack.io slash podcast. Please rate and review us on iTunes, like us on YouTube, and follow us on SoundCloud. Thanks for listening and see you next time.